Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian in Tukwila, Washington, where we are at the P-8 uh, integration facility, integration and checkout facility here. Uh, full disclosure, Boeing is one of our sponsors, and we're talking to Fred Bruner, who is the man who makes the magic, the production magic uh, at Thank this you. site <laughs> happen. Fred, thanks very much. You, you gave us a great tour uh, just a little while ago. And what I want to ask you is, you know, you guys are, you know, get the airplanes. You know, we visited Renton where we saw the airplanes being built. Uh, they get flown over here. And what happens once they come into this facility? Yeah, thanks, Walgo. Um, we are, we, this is missionizing the aircraft. The, uh, the aircraft comes out of Renton, um, beautiful airplane. I can't quite go to war uh, at this point. And uh, that is our full uh, responsibility here is to roughly in uh, 80 to 90 days that we have fully missionized the aircraft. We go through our government acceptance and uh, ultimate delivery to our customer, the U.S. Navy. The um, you know one of the things which is which is really interesting, and you pride yourselves on this, is that when it leaves that assembly line, it is a commercial aircraft. It is designated the 737-800A, as if there's any other airplane that's designated that. But um, you guys are a purely commercial customer from Boeing Commercial Aircraft, aren't you? You're buying it like an airline would. In essence, that's correct. We are on a purchase agreement with our with our our peer in our company, and uh, but that's really important. Um, that's what keeps the cost down. We leverage from their um, production system, and then we do our special mission uh, capability for the aircraft. But pretty much when the aircraft arrives on your side of the facility, um, all the power cables are there. I mean, what sort of modification are you doing to the airplane in this facility? Yeah, uh, very little. As you can hear in the background, very little. It's uh, quite quiet in here. It is really the, the final missionization of stalling the, uh, the, the, the weapons uh, um, uh, LRUs or you know, our line assembly units, that um, uh, mission equipment, the, the, the data storage, the, the final um, aspects of making it a weapon system. When, um, I know on this line we have multiple aircraft from multiple countries, obviously now I think there are going to be, what, five P-8, four, at least four P-8 operators, right? UK has them, India's acquired them, Australia's acquired them, and Norway's announced. So it's not yet formal yet That's on correct. that, but they've announced uh, intention, uh, intention to acquire. Um, what is the rate at which you guys are producing and delivering airplanes yeah, at this point? Um, that's, uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, even with those mixed models, we are at one and a half a month rate. Um, that's best for our customers. It's, it's a stable workforce. Uh, that is best for everybody, our taxpayers as well, is that, uh, that we're not going down and, and our learning curve and then coming back up because of changing quantities. So stable production system is best for all. And, and how long lead are, your, you know, are you looking in terms of you know, your contracts and the flow of parts? I mean, obviously you guys are not working at a crazy rate here, but you know, you're nothing like uh, 42, 47, 52, 57, which is planned on the 737 side of things. But still from your standpoint, you could look at some challenges, obviously, if things aren't being delivered on time. How far out are you guys looking as you're mapping out your production planning? Um, at least five years. Um, our skyline is full through minimum 2022. Uh, there are more foreign uh, customers that are interested in this product. Um, I'll leave that kind of maybe to you to speak with the Navy about. Um, but um, we, we have the skyline full um, uh, for some time, and we can make some adjustments. Um, if the quantities dip down, we can change the period of performance. But again, it's just a stable workforce is best for us, uh, our supply base, and again, for the, for the customer. Ultimately, how much difference is there in the aircraft that, for example, the UK is acquiring, Australia is acquiring India? I know India has a magnetic anomaly detector that's on the airplane based on their requirement, but how much difference is there in the airplanes among the US ones and the foreign very ones? Very little. Uh, very little difference. There are unique uh, customer requests, and we can accommodate that in the production system. We haven't had anything that's so unique that, that perturbates that we have a longer flow time in our factory. Um, it's pretty much accommodated within the same, same requirements. And to date, how many of the jets have been delivered and how many more are to be delivered? We're standing um, right in front of the, uh, what will be the 51st production um, uh, uh, U.S. Navy uh, aircraft. And uh, we're on contract for 80 at the time. And of course, in continued discussions uh, aligned with the president's budget. And how many of them are in the fleet now? Uh, 49. 40, and so how long? Production aircraft are in, in uh, the U.S. Navy's fleet. And how long before this is sitting in the hands of somebody in the U.S. Navy? Um, this one probably be about another, well, this will be a, uh, a first quarter delivery. Um, so we're wrapping up. We have an aircraft that are about ready to make our year end. It'll be our 50th production aircraft uh, delivered here within the next two weeks. And where is, what unit is that going to? 
uh, as a that, Navy determination. Never mind. Navy, Navy, <laughs> Navy will determine Navy that. Navy goes to NAS Jacksonville in Florida. When you got that's right, because Jacksonville is also preparing. It would be Island's going to be getting them, and they're going through Jacksonville in order that's to go correct. up there. Um, uh, nearby, relatively nearby. Uh, still a long way to go to, to get up there. But um, how long is the approval checkout certification process? Once you finish the jet, talk to us a little bit about the program you guys have to go to to get the U.S. Navy to sign off on this as an operational aircraft. Roughly, when we we have DCMA uh, that's participating in our in our factory, uh, obviously there's. The, uh, uh, the oversight the DCMA brings as part of the customer. Um, so it, it's a progressive acceptance of the aircraft. We finally get into a, an event where we're flying the aircraft roughly two times, um, sw sw switching who's the pilot in command, and then, they, uh, and then the personnel in the back of the airplane. Uh, that event normally is about uh, 10 to 12 days. Um, that's including a couple flights and then a, a, a larger ground event where we demonstrate the whole uh, back of the aircraft, all the mission systems capability. And in order to be able to keep this rate, you said you're under contract for 80 of the jets. The Navy's got a requirement for around 117, 19, there about. We were That's talking about. fighter stated requirements, still 117 aircraft. Is, is 117 aircraft. At what point do you need to know, you know, given that you are planning so far out and ahead for that extra batch of airplanes, how much, how much warning do you need before? You know, it starts to have an effect on production cycle here. Well, uh, again, we work very closely with the customer, and and when the president's budget is, is the president's budget, and and we'll accommodate the best we can if the quantity is reduced. So we 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 know at least uh, 24 months, if not longer, um, uh, before there's some need to change the period of performance to allow us to stay at our, at our one and a half a month rate. Right, let's talk a little bit about learning curve. What has the learning curve been? What were some of the early challenges? What are some of the lessons you've learned that are helping you speed production cycles uh, on the airplanes? I mean, first three, you know, had a, a weight issue. They had the, the, uh, the head aft and I things like, like that moved the around. Design maturation, um, <laughs> uh, as any development program, right. there, there there was a lot of committed work that um, uh, that just was from a lead time that could not be uh, completed over where it should be is in the commercial system whether it's in their supply base or, or over in the Renton facility that you saw today. Um, over those early uh, uh, lot aircraft, we committed a lot of effort back into the commercial system. Uh, it's reduced our, our, our tack times at least by 50%. Sir, we thanks. Are, we are in full rate production right now. Sir, thanks very much. Bob, thank you. Really appreciate it.